Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike Resendez. I go by Reezy Resells, and on my channel, I teach people how to make a living selling on Amazon, even if they don't have any money to start with. Reezy Resells. Follow the hustle. Now, before we get into it, I want to tell you guys a little bit about myself. I grew up on food stamps. I'm a high school dropout. I don't come from money. I had a rough childhood, and yet I've still sold nearly $10 million on Amazon, and I started that all with $5. What you're going to see in this video is me making $7 hundred dollars in three hours buying new products from Walmart and then selling them on Amazon for profit. This process is called retail arbitrage and it can be quite profitable. You're also going to learn a bit about Amazon's third party fulfillment service, Fulfillment by Amazon, otherwise known as FBA and why it's the best thing ever. Now there is just one thing we need to touch on before you're off to the races and running and you need to understand that Amazon will not let new sellers sell any product they want. As a new seller, unfortunately a lot of products are going to be restricted and you're not going to be able to sell them on Amazon unless you get approval from Amazon. This approval can be extremely hard for new sellers to get but there is a way around it and if you stay to the end I'm going to share a huge secret with you that's going to allow you to get approved to sell almost any brand you want to sell on Amazon. Approved. That's enough of me talking let's go make some money. All right, so headed into Walmart. Surprise, I ended up in the Lego aisle. First things first, I started looking for hidden clearance. That's when you use the Walmart app to scan items to see if the price is lower than the tag actually shows on the shelf. You can find some really cool stuff like that. We didn't actually find any, but we did find some Lego Friends sets that I had actually sold before, and I'm using the Scoutify 2 app to look those up right there. We also found some Star Wars sets, which I didn't show in the video. But this is actually the email that I got from previous sales of that Lego friend set. So that's pretty cool to have that reassurance. We also grabbed a few of the Gujitsu figures here. Nothing big. They're $10. I think we made $3 profit on each one. The last thing we ended up picking up were these Cutters Youth Football Gloves. They didn't have the largest demand. There was a few different sizes, but the markdown was significant. So we scooped those up, threw those in the cart. When we left, we ended up spending just under $1,100, and then we were on our way home. All right, so that was an hour and a half of work at Walmart to make $700 profit. And I know what you're thinking, and you're right. I didn't actually really make that money yet because I didn't sell those products yet. And so technically it's expected profit, not profit. And in order to realize that profit, we have to process that inventory and send it off to Amazon FBA where it can sell and ultimately fulfill its destiny to become dollars in your bank account. I'm rich, boy. Oh, rich. You guys ready to head down to the garage and do this work? All right, you are? All right, let's go. All right, welcome to the garage. Now it's time for the fun part. We got to list all of the items that we purchased into Inventory Lab, a service that we use with the barcode scanner. We're going to print out labels. We're going to box it up. We're going to send it to Amazon. This is all the necessary stuff that you have to do after buying the inventory if you want to be an Amazon seller and make money. And it's honestly, it's probably going to be a little bit boring, but if you want to learn this stuff, stay tuned. Let's get to work. This is a very simple, basic garage workstation that I have set up here. I got a laptop, nothing fancy, eight gigabytes, Windows 10. I got a USB barcode scanner. It's like a $20 joint. I have it on continuous scan so I can just put barcodes under it when I need it. Don't worry about the mess over there. This is mostly like supplies and stuff. But over here, we've got the products that we purchased. We have the Gujitsu figures, the TIE fighters, the X-Wings, the Friendship Bus, and a lot of those football gloves. So first thing we're gonna do is make a new batch in inventory lad and I'm actually gonna list these things in different batches because I want to make what is known as a case packed shipment so we're gonna start off with our first shipment we're gonna put the barcode into the search field up there and we are going to scan it then you're gonna press select you can actually see a little bit of information about the product there we're gonna scroll down to total quantity here we're gonna put four because we have four of them right here it says average cost per unit we're gonna put 9.99 because that's what we paid for supplier we're gonna put Walmart that's the store that we purchased it from also there's the purchase date here it's already filled out as January 30th and then you can see the SKU that it builds here is relevant to that it says the date then it has your supplier then it has the sales rank then your cost and then a random number at the end just to differentiate 
differentiate everything. Over here on the side, you can actually see the different offers and how you would actually price the item. You can see that the lowest FBA offer is $19.99, and then the next one is $20.52. And if you click on that price, it puts it down here into the calculator. And if we list it for $19.99 and we paid $9.99, it looks like our profit down here is going to be $3.28 or an ROI of almost 33%, which is not bad. And I actually like to price my FBA items a little bit higher than what the current market is right now, considering we're going to ship them in and it's going to be a day or two or three before they even get there. And who knows, maybe even a few more days before Amazon receives them and then they're able to be sold to customers for now. We are gonna put this one at $21.99 and I'm gonna put my minimum price at $19.99 for now, which is actually the lowest current price. And that's basically $20 profit right there. Let's go over here and press add to batch. Our stickers should be coming out right here. When you put the stickers on the items, Amazon wants you to cover up the barcodes. You have to make it so that their employees can't actually scan one of the toys barcodes. And when you get those done, put those to the side and then process the next unit. We're gonna kind of move the process along here. It's all the same basically. As you know, we purchased a bunch of these gloves. Every one of them has one of these little yellow stickers and they don't really come off very easy. So we're gonna have to use a heat gun to take these off. This is the heat gun. Ideally, I like them with a little stand, but they have a couple settings basically a really hot hair dryer. First, we're gonna set this thing to low and we're gonna be careful not to damage the product or the packaging. If the packaging can melt or the product can melt, you need to be very careful of that. You can see the sticker changes because these are thermal stickers, so it's reacting to the heat. So the darker it gets, you know the hotter it is. So then we're gonna turn this off, get our tool and just get to scraping, get to the edge of it. And usually when you get it up, you can just pull the rest of it off. This might take a while, we're gonna need a little coffee break. Ah, that's great. It's also a little hot. All right. <laughs> Nothing like de-stickering 50 items. Austin, you get those clearance tags picked up? <laughs> now that we got all of these stickers off, we're gonna list it into Inventory Lab. What? What are you looking at? Now it's time to list all of these items into <laughs> those clearance tags, man. They just stick to everything. I don't know what happens sometimes, man. Static electricity. <laughs> We got the gloves separated into four different piles. Let's go ahead and scan one. The current low price is $19.94, and if we list them for $19.94, the profit is gonna be $6.58. And I'm actually fine with that, but I'm still gonna price up higher just in case those offers sell out while these are inbound. For these ones, we didn't get stickers. You can see it actually says no label. Amazon's not requiring us to label these ones because we do commingled inventory. Now that everything is listed into this shipment in Inventory Lab, we're gonna actually upload it to Amazon and create the Amazon shipment. More fun stuff, let's get into it. We're gonna press review batch, then we're gonna press submit, and you can see it's telling us all these different locations that it wants to send stuff. We're gonna say, go ahead, send products, sync feeds. Now on this screen, you can see these are the actual shipments we're gonna be creating in Amazon from Inventory Lab. So we're just running through here and clicking create shipment, and then it's saying, do you wanna create this shipment? And you say yes, and then that's when it actually talks to Amazon and then creates the shipment, and you'll see these shipments here in a a second. Each one of these is gonna be a separate set of boxes or shipments that are going to different Amazon FBA warehouses. You can actually see the warehouse codes here on this side and how many units are gonna be in that shipment. Once all of the shipments are completed, you're gonna actually click on the bottom down here, complete and close batch. Boom, bottom, done. Now we're in the shipping queue on Amazon and we can see the shipments there over here with the orange marks that say work on shipment. I like to start with the biggest shipment, make a box, take the products, put them in the box. Now we're gonna add a little bit of packing paper just to the top or bubble pack. Get it taped shut. There you go, that's the box. Let's weigh it out. Five pounds, eight ounces, that means it's six pounds. In step three, after you choose everything in one box, go to the right side, put in the box weight, six pounds. Put in the box dimensions. You don't really have to measure it. You can just estimate it, but if you don't feel comfortable, go ahead and measure it. And we're going to continue. You press confirm. Now it says it's gonna charge us $5.30 for those six pounds. It's not 50 cents a pound, but it could be a lot more. It's not terrible, right? So ideally you wanna make shipments that are heavier per box, like up to 40, 45 pounds, that way you get a better rate. So we're gonna accept these charges and you get two labels. You got your UPS postage label and you have your Amazon box label. So put the UPS label on one side and then put the Amazon label on the other side and then that item is ready to be dropped off at a UPS store or handed off to a UPS man. Make sure you get a receipt when you drop off your FBA shipments, that way you can prove that you actually gave it to the UPS store. Also, if you're reusing a box, make sure that you cover up any other previous addresses or anything 
plug so that the box doesn't actually come back to you. Had it happen a bunch of times. First shipment done. We're gonna set that to the side. There's actually one more thing. You actually have to click complete shipment here at the bottom and then click mark as shipped. And then we can actually close that tab and start working on the next shipment. So one shipment is all five friendship buses. We could pack this in with paper or bubble or whatever. It's just not as secure or fast as cutting it down. So real quick, you're just gonna take your knife, put it into the corner as close as you can get, and you're gonna cut the corner upward. Cut upward from the corner, right? Over here. Because there's a gap right here on this side, we're not gonna fold it on this side first. We're gonna fold it on this side first. So we're gonna fold against the product, right? We're gonna create that nice fold. And now that we have this cardboard here to support this side, we can get a nice fold there. And then down here on the other end, we actually don't even need all this cardboard. We can cut some of this cardboard out if we want. Be careful. This is not something that I recommend for beginners to do, but if you hold it nice and tight, you can cut a nice perfect piece through the one layer of cardboard and then they fit together nice and perfectly and then just tape it as usual. Let's go to the last. These four are so small. I'm actually just gonna throw these in a bubble mailer. So this one actually only weighs 11 ounces. For this one pound package, we're gonna pay $4.51. This is the inventory lab summary of the shipment we just submitted. Total sales value is 2,500. The buy cost is 1,100. Total net profit is just under $700, which is not bad for a few hours out shopping at retail stores. $4.50 a pound is not what you wanna pay. If you know the tips and tricks that I'm about to tell you in the next section, you can pay as little as 50 cents a pound, even as low as six cents a pound because $4.50 a pound is just ridiculous. Hey, welcome back to the studio, guys. For the most part, our work is done, and that's the beauty of Amazon FBA. Now, one of the tricky things when making Amazon FBA shipments, and you may have noticed that in the video in the garage, is called split shipments or splits. Basically, what happens is we tell Amazon, hey, I have 23 of these things to send to your FBA warehouse, and they say, sure, send 10 here, send 10 over there, and send three over there. There. And the problem is, is that three unit shipment is very light and we're not going to be able to get an optimum per pound inbound shipping rate for that three unit shipment. Fortunately, there are a few things you can do to combat this and I'm going to share those with you guys now. Number one, send larger shipments. Bigger shipments are proven to get much less splits than smaller shipments and the splits that they do get are much more manageable because they are larger themselves. For example, you could have 60 units units and Amazon might ask you to make that into six shipments. But if you had 600 units, Amazon might ask you to make it into two shipments, one 400 unit shipment and one 200 unit shipment. And that would not only save you a lot of money on your inbound shipping costs, but it would save you a considerable amount of time in building those two much larger shipments. Two, adjust your item quantities in your shipment. Amazon allows you to change the quantities plus or minus 5%. So take Take advantage of this to consolidate your random loose items into single shipments and maybe even potentially delete shipments you don't need to send in because it was just one unit and you can send that unit over there in that shipment that already has that unit. Three, and this is my favorite tip for this section, that is make case packed shipments. Now the cool thing here is that there's no fixed definition of what a case is, so we get to define this each time we make a shipment to Amazon FBA of a specific product. For example, let's say you have 30 of an item and you can fit 10 in a box and that box weighs 40 pounds which is a good inbound shipping rate in this scenario you would send in a case packed shipment that had a box configuration of 10 units per box and you would send in three boxes now Amazon might still decide to send each one of those boxes to a different warehouse but at least we still get to control how many go in a box, which also means we're controlling the weight and gives us a lot of control at what we're gonna pay for our per pound inbound shipping rate. Not to mention case pack shipments save you so much time because if you have dozens of the same item or even hundreds of them, you can set up a box configuration and you can make shipments very, very fast. Now, tip number four is to utilize Amazon's inventory placement service. Amazon's inventory placement service 
service allows you to send your units to a warehouse that you specify that is near you. But before you get super happy about it, you need to know that it does cost 30 cents a unit and it is not an option for all product categories on Amazon. So depending on what you sell on Amazon, it may not even be an option for you. Wow. So if you've made it this long in the video, I truly appreciate you. Please smash the like button because I am about to drop the super banger nugget that you have been waiting for. The last tip I have for you is how you can get approved to not only sell toys on Amazon, but how you can get approved to sell Lego and lots of other big name toy brands on Amazon. It's actually way, way easier than you think. What you're gonna wanna do is set up an account with a company called EE Distribution. This is a very large reputable company and they're not gonna do business with a random person who wants to sell some crap to get approved to sell on Amazon. Make sure your business is registered with all the official channels necessary and you have all the proper business documents you need before you contact EE Distribution to get your wholesale account set up. And please, please don't make your account inquiry from your Hotmail. Get a real domain email address, maybe even set up a one-page website for your company. Now, when you contact EE Distribution, be professional. Do not lead with you're an Amazon seller and you need to get approved and you want to get ungated. They don't know anything about that and they don't actually care. And you might be shooting yourself in the foot because they might charge you more when they find out you're an Amazon seller. That's probably not going to come back to buy more stuff from them because they know they're being used. I'm not telling you to lie. If they ask you if you sell on Amazon, you can tell them you sell on Amazon. Now, once you get your account set up, you're going to want to order 10 quantity of an item that you're restricted to sell on Amazon. And when you get your invoice, you can submit that to Amazon to get approved to sell that brand. They will most likely turn you down when you submit your invoice. And that is just because their system is entirely automated. Continue to submit that same invoice again and again until it works. And remember, we're ordering this stuff to get approved to sell on Amazon, not necessarily to make a profit. So don't try to find a certain item that's going to make you a lot of profit from EE distribution. Focus on products that are not going to cost you a lot, like a keychain or some very small apparel item that preferably has a large demand so that when you get it, you can sell it very quickly. You might lose 15 or 25% of your capital, but at least you got most of it back and now you're approved to sell that brand on Amazon. Now, for a super duper pro tip for those of you that stayed all the way to the very, very end, when you place your order for your item to get ungated from EE Distribution, don't just order a Lego item. Order a Star Wars Lego keychain. Why? Because you can not only double dip, you can triple dip on that invoice. You can submit that invoice one time to get ungated in Lego. Then you can submit it again to get ungated in Star Wars. Then you can submit it again to get ungated gated in Disney. Now, if you guys aren't going to like or subscribe after that pro tip, I really don't know what's going to win you over, but I promise you I'm going to keep trying. So if you're interested and you need more info on Amazon, please click the link down below in the description to get a copy of my free intro to Amazon course, and that will get you in the game. Remember, if you ain't flipping, you slipping. Peace, y'all.